Um, you know, the secret, well, let me tell you a story. Three guys stranded on a deserted island, and uh, this little lamp washes up on the island. It's a genie lamp, and so um, one of the guys rubs the lamp, and a genie pops out. The genie says, I'll give each of you one wish. They've been on this island like 18 years. So the first guy says, man, like, I, I just want to eat good food for the rest of my life. Like, just eat good food. It's so awesome. Jesus says, your wish is my command. Boom. He's sitting in this luxurious restaurant. Wonderful food. Everything you could ever want. Next guy says, man, um, he says, you know, my wish is that I would love to sleep in a wonderful bed and stay in a luxurious hotel. Jesus says, your wish is my command. Boom. This guy's now in a luxurious hotel. Life's good. Everything's great. He turns to the last guy, the third guy. He says, you get one wish. Your wish is my command. What do you want? The guy kind of thinks about it. He says, gosh, you know, I don't know. I mean, Kind of quiet here on the island now. It's kind of lonely. He says, I guess I really just wish my friends were back. <laughs> there you have it. You know, that gets to the tension and the secret. Let's say you're sitting there and you're imagining and visualizing sunny days. And you're thinking sunny thoughts, sunny thoughts, sunny days, sunny days. But your neighbor's thinking rain, 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 rain. Who wins? You know, like, who would he get overcast for, you know, a couple decades? I mean, what goes on in the midst of that? Or let's, let's take it even further. Rhonda Byrne basically claims that you not only attract good things to your life, you attract bad things, including accidents. And accidents happen because you have attracted them into your life. But, let's think about the Holocaust. Do you really believe that millions of Jewish people attracted their own death by their thoughts? Or was there someone else involved called Hitler who was evil and dark and had quite a scheme going on? Let's, let's talk about 9-11, the Twin Towers. Do you really believe some of your friends, some of your relatives that were involved in and in the Twin Towers, when those planes hit them, attracted those planes to them by what they thought. Here's what Rhonda Byrne says. She says, they did not want to be there enough. And therefore, they're there. So while there's some aspects of this law of attraction that the Bible might affirm in some ways, certainly, as you go down the road, it gets more and more dangerous, I think. And let's go even a little further. It, Ron Abraham says you've got to be careful about allowing negative thoughts into your life because the law of attraction is like gravity. It will just work. So if, you, um, you know, if you're trying to be thin, then you need to avoid overweight people is the implication. You need to stay away from anybody who's fat. You know, does that make you think fat thoughts? And fat thoughts, is, you know, <laughs> track fat, I guess. Or, you know, when it comes to, to, to money, she literally says the poor are poor because they're blocky money with their thoughts. But sometimes it feels like you're stuck because you continue to think the same thoughts over and over again. And so you tend to get the same results over and over again. And the reason is because most people offer the majority of their thought in response to what they are observing. You see, if you're just looking at what is, then you're just thinking about what is. And when you think about what is, law of attraction gives you more of it. And then if you just observe what is, then you're just thinking about what is. And law of attraction gives you more of what is. And then if you just observe, well, we've been over this, haven't we? You have to find a way that you are approaching what is through a different vantage point. Most people look at their current state of affairs and they say, this is who I am. That's not who you are. That's who you were. You see, if you look at your current state of affairs right now, let's say, for instance, that you don't have a lot of money in, the ba in your bank account, uh, or you don't have the relationship that you want, or your health and fitness isn't up to par. That's not who you are. That's the residual outcome of your past thoughts and actions. So we're constantly living in this residual, if you will, of the thoughts and the actions we've taken in the past. When you look at your current state of affairs and define yourself by that, then you, you doom yourself to have nothing more than the same in the future. Thoughts. <laughs> yeah, that's me. I mean, just what 
Yeah, that's the implication. So you're not supposed to, to be around the poor, to be around, you basically want to avoid them because you don't want to think about them because in thinking about them, it'll evoke lots of poverty which can then impact your life. Let's just play this out. Let's say Martin Luther King Jr. lived by the secret and took it as religion and implored it into his life. Martin Luther King, if he lived by the secret, would never have impacted the civil rights movement in America, would never have organized marches, would never have stood up and put his life on the line and speech after speech after speech. Why? Because he was around difficulty and hardship and poverty and jail. He was beaten. He went through all kinds of things. And I'm so glad that he did. Aren't you? <laughs> Mother Teresa, she takes the secret, incorporates it into her life and lives it to the extreme. She's not going to take care of the people in Calcutta because they're sick and they're dying. And that's negative vibes, man. And so she wouldn't have helped those people and impacted them, but I'm so glad that they did. I always say when the voice and the vision on the inside become more profound and more clear and loud than the opinions on the outside, you've mastered your life. But she did. And then you go a little further and you say, I mean, the implications of it, if you take it to the extreme, or, you know, you got a high school student who's got a test coming up, but you need to study, man, kick back, play Xbox, and like, think A, think A, think A. You got a health issue? got to lose some weight. I mean, you know, you don't even diet and exercise. Kick it with a Krispy Kreme donut and a cup of coffee and stay skinny. So the law of attraction, the study uh, and practice of the law of attraction is just figuring out what will help you generate the feelings of having it now. Go test drive that car. Go shop for that home. Get in the house. Do whatever you have to do to generate the feelings of having it now and remember them. Whatever you can do to do that will help you to literally attract it. It could be you wake up and it's just there, it's manifest. Or you might get some inspired idea of some action to take. You certainly shouldn't be going, well, I could do it this way, but man, I would hate that because you're not on the right track if that's the case. Action will sometimes be required, but if you're really doing it in line with what the universe is trying to deliver, it's going to feel joyous, you're going to feel so alive, time will just stop, you could do it all day. The universe likes speed. Don't delay, don't second guess, don't doubt. When the opportunity's there, when the impulse is there, when the intuitive nudge from within is there, act. That's your job. And that's all you have to do. the solution for you don't like now you owe me and you need to give me more instead give more to yourself take time off to give to yourself in a sense to fill yourself up to fullness where now you can overflow in giving